Is there a more visually stunning city than Dubrovnik? Nicknamed the Pearl of the Adriatic, this destination is sure to capture your gaze. Between its white limestone buildings, bright terracotta rooftops, and cobalt blue waters that sparkle under the sunlight, it's understandable if you end up having a camera glued to your hands your whole visit. For us, this was the final stop of our travels in Croatia, and what a way to finish off our trip. We walked up, down, and around the old town, clocking thousands of steps each day. And in this video, we're going to take you on a tour of the city and show you 15 things to do in Dubrovnik. Alright guys, so I'm heading down to the old town right now and I just wanted to show you the views that we get from the hill over here. You can see all of Dubrovnik down there, the whole walled city, but... We have to earn these views every single day. It's 440 steps. Alright guys, we've only been here a few minutes and we've just walked in through one of the gates and check out the views we are already getting. Like, this is postcard perfect. This is our first introduction to Dubrovnik. I mean, it can only get better from here. Sam is just loving every minute. Busy at Taking work. photos, yep. taking videos yeah. in his element. Exactly. We entered the old town through Ploche Gate, which is in the east end of the city. Here we kicked off the morning with a nice stroll along the old port, which is where we also met the most agile cat in the world. It's okay. Oh, look at that. Oh, look at the cat. Oh my gosh. I'm, oh yeah, he's going to do it. Do it, do it, do it. No. Do it. No. Do it. Whoa! After that impressive display of feline acrobatics, we continued exploring the old town on foot. Our next stop, Dubrovnik Cathedral, which has seen a few expansions and reconstructions over the years. At one point, it was even funded by England's King Richard the Lionheart after he was saved from a shipwreck on the nearby island of Lokerum. We then wandered over to Gundelich Square where a few vendors had set up for the day. And as usual, it didn't take us long to sniff out a few treats. So it is time for a mid-morning snack. We saw a man who was selling traditional Croatian sweets. Yeah. So we're like, yeah, we'll get some of those. Basically so dried fruit, right? Dried fruit. Dried we paid sweet the fruit. equivalent of three euros, and we've already been munching a little bit. Oh yeah. Um, My parents have got into that too. Yes. But basically, <laughs> we have some candied orange. We have some dried figs. We also have almonds. Um, yeah. So yeah I'm just gonna Sugar it in. But you know, dig right in. Nice little sugar boost, Fan huh? Of the, as we're the, walking around. Did I call these almonds? Almonds. Mmm. <laughs> and our our Ooh. family friend Val said that the the dried orange peel was her favorite. So why don't you That's try that? So good. Okay. Try one of those. Try one of these. I feel bad. Sam's mom paid for these, and I'm already. Yeah, we'll, 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 we'll give her some. We'll give her some. Is it good? Ooh. Sweet. Wow. Sweet. Surprisingly sweet. Yeah. I don't think I've ever had orange peel before. I have. It's been, it's usually really oh. sweet. I think they add extra sugar to that, mm -hmm. <laughs> to be honest. Yeah, nice little sack. We also made a stop at the famed Big Onofrio Fountain, which was built in 1438 as part of a water system that supplied water from a spring 12 kilometers away. 
All right, we've got a pretty cool public water fountain here within the walls. That's one of the coolest drinking water fountains I've ever seen. Yeah, check so out. I've been building up not only appetite walking around, but also quite a bit of thirst. So I'm gonna just. Oh, he's going right in. Going right in. Oh, yeah, it's refreshing. And the best part is it's cold. It has zero aftertaste. It's really, really clean water. Nice. Then another attraction unexpectedly caught her attention, the old pharmacy at the Franciscan Monastery. Founded in the year 1317, this in-house pharmacy was set up by Franciscan friars and would go on to service the town as well as people living beyond the walls. And to keep with tradition, there's still a pharmacy within the monastery today, though with a few modern touches added. So that was a pretty cool attraction. We got to visit the cloisters, but we also set foot in what is believed to be the third oldest pharmacy in the whole world. So it's pretty cool. We got to read through these old medical textbooks and like botanical books. So it's pretty interesting. And I mean, you can't beat the views of this cloister. It's pretty stunning. They've got like some lemon trees or orange trees in here. So yeah, nice spot. Then we made a brief stop to try and visit the rector's palace, which was built in the late 15th century for the elected rector who governed Dubrovnik. Unfortunately, we were there just as they were finishing up renovations, but by the time you are watching this, it should be open to the public once more. But now a quick break from all the sightseeing to meet some of Dubrovnik's cats. Two friendly kitties. Oh yes, sure oh, yes, sure oh, yes. The following morning, I made my way into town solo to catch one of the first sightseeing boat tours. This particular tour was called the Panorama Excursion, and it departed from the old port and went around Lokrum Island. You can't go wrong with the views anywhere in Dubrovnik, and looking back at the old town was just spectacular. Then later that day, I met Sam for lunch, because if there's one thing I'll show up for, it's food. We decided to eat at Mea Culpa and ordered one Dalmatian pizza and one seafood pizza. All right, pizza for the win, guys. It has been a while and we couldn't leave Croatia without having yeah. one more pizza. Outside of Italy, I don't think we've had better pizzas than in Croatia. Yes. So I got the Dalmatian one. Yeah. Cherry tomatoes, black olives, prosciutto, arugula, tomato yeah. sauce. And I got the frutte de mare, the seafood one. Here we go. Here we go. How is it? Mm. Delicious. Mm. It's just lovely. It's got big pieces of prosciutto. So much cheese. So much cheese. Oh, yum. And I drizzled the um, chili pepper oil. Yep. Yep. Which is so good. And also, Sam, did you see this? This is so nuts. <laughs> What? Ideal topping. The oh raw my egg. Gosh. Oh yeah, there's an egg in the middle. <laughs> that was an interesting ingredient choice. Yeah, but are you gonna break it now or later? No, I'm gonna let it cook a little bit more. Okay. With the heat of the pizza. <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, that's so fun. That, that's definitely not a topping I'd order. So good. Cool. Seafood pizza for Sam. Seafood pizza, my absolute favorite. Frutte de mari. And he goes. Oh, wow. Yeah, a bit of seafood. You're right about the cheese, like generous amount of oh, cheese. Oh yeah, lots of cheese. It's so good. It, it also tastes like they've blended the cheese. It's not just mozzarella. Mm. And after that wonderful meal, it was time for the main attraction: walking around Dubrovnik's old city walls. What do you think? It's incredible and we couldn't have asked for better weather. I know. It, it's not too crowded. Like it's just the right time of year. We're here in yes. March. And like this whole section we've almost got to ourselves. There's like a, just a couple others. Admission is 150 kuna, which is a bit over 20 US dollars. And it's roughly a two kilometer walk that takes about one hour to complete. 
The first set of walls were built in the 9th century, and then in the 14th century these were strengthened with forts along the circumference. In our opinion, this attraction is worth the price tag. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness, that was yeah. a long walk in the sun. I would say it took us over an hour, wouldn't you? Yeah, they, they say the estimated time is an hour, but if you're taking lots of photos and videos like us, yeah, give yourself an extra half pokes. hour, if not more. Yeah, and if you can't complete the full loop, there are a few different exit points yes. along the way. I think I think we saw like three yeah. or four. Another thing, so, to yeah. another thing to keep in mind is there are refreshment stations periodically. Yes. And also, there are a few sections where I wish I was three foot one instead of six foot one. Oh my gosh. Because both sides of the walls were really short. I was kind of bending like my up knees. Up to our knees. Like yeah. the wall only reached up yeah. to our knees. So if you I get vertigo or you don't like heights, it's kind yeah. of like, whoa, I'm but exposed. There's just a few sections and it's worth powering through because yes. it is absolutely incredible. Mm -hmm. Like if there's one thing you have to do in Dubrovnik, it is this. The wall. Like wall. if that's wall. all you had time to do in the city, I would say go and do that wall tour because it is yeah. unbelievable. The views you get and not just from a few points, but from everywhere. It's yeah. just stunning. So, I went for strawberry and yeah. Sam went for... I went for, uh, let me think, uh, creme caramel. Ooh. and pistachio which i've almost ate completely the yeah and part. if we've learned a thing or two about ice cream about yeah. gelato in italy it's that when you have neon colors yeah it's usually not natural but we don't care it's not supernatural we're gonna you let know this what? neon green it's pass. been it's been tasting really good after that long walk yeah. along the wall and it's also pre it's pretty decent for uh, -huh. uh given that it's not the most natural mm -hmm. and i will say this too that it was a good price 10 kuna for scoop so yeah 10 kuna each for cone after that quick ice cream break we walked over to fort lovrienats also known as the saint lawrence fortress perched on a cliff 37 meters above the sea this fortress dominates sea and land entrances from the western side of the city the fortress also has a fascinating story behind it. It turns out that at the start of the 11th century, the Venetians intended to build their own fortress in this very spot to hold Dubrovnik powerless, but when the locals learned of this plan, they decided to beat the Venetians to it. They began building immediately, completing their fortress within three months' time, and when the Venetian ships finally arrived with building materials, they discovered they'd been outsmarted by the people of Dubrovnik. Well, that was impressive. Quite possibly the best views of the old town, to yeah, be honest, especially with the right light. this time of day. Come in the afternoon, biggest yeah. tip ever. Anyways, what Game of Thrones fans will be thrilled to hear is that your city wall ticket allows you access into here. Yeah, even if you're not a fan of the show, yeah. I mean, it's worth yeah. it coming since you've already Good paid. <laughs> Good point. I mean, it's worth exploring. It's cool going on the different levels, looking at the different vantage points, and you get the most amazing view of the old town of Dubrovnik from here. So just past the fortress, we found this nice little park. It's a little escape from the city center. Mm -hmm. And it's just, oh, it's nice. There's like, there's a breeze coming in this morning. We're gonna go for a little walk. And yeah, it's kind of nice to do something that maybe only locals would do here. Just like the fortress we had previously visited, Gradage Park was also used as one of the Game of Thrones filming locations. So you may recognize it from the Purple Wedding. And then we made a stop at Booza Bar, which is a great place for drinks any time of day, but especially so around sunset. So we are wrapping up the day here at Booza Bar, which I think may have the best views. Yeah, you're just look, you're looking right out into the Adriatic Sea. By the water, yes. Yeah. It's amazing. But here's the kicker. We're a little bit too lazy to stay here right until sunset. So it's close enough. Close to sunset. Close to sunset. And then we're going to walk back up the hill yeah. to our apartment because we get some pretty good views from our balcony. Yeah, but here's the and thing. Yeah. It's almost 500 steps each way. So by the time <laughs> we make it up... 440 something. 440 okay, something. Okay, but imagine all the steps we've done around the wall. We're talking thousands of steps today, guys. I'm going to yeah. need a nap when we get back. So this is what the end of our days usually looks like. 
What's the deal? I'm already beat, but apparently we have something like, it's either 441 or 481. I can't exactly remember. Our family friend Val counted the amount of steps. That's how many steps we have to go to our house. But it's so worth it when we get there. Guys, we're gonna pour ourselves a glass of wine and show you the views. We're probably gonna give you a bit of a sunset view and maybe a bit of blue hour tonight as well. So let's get up there. All right, start climbing, my friend. There she goes, there she goes. So we had our siesta, mm -hmm. and now it is time for sunset views. Sunset and on the balcony. This is the best time of the day. And this is also where we'll be wrapping up our guide. We had a really good time in Dubrovnik. Yes. We were only here for two days, but we really, like, man, we did a lot. So yeah. if you're coming, you can definitely do this on a weekend trip. Mm -hmm. Obviously, if you have more time, that's nice too. But um, yeah, we had a great time, and we'd highly recommend you come visit. So cheers to that. Cheers to that. Glug, 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 glug. Oh, yeah. And that's a wrap for Dubrovnik and the rest of our time in Croatia. As always, we hope you enjoyed following along and that this video gave you a few ideas of some of the things you can do in Dubrovnik on your visit. Wishing you happy travels and we'll see you in the next videos as we're off to Greece.